When I make these recaps, you know, these are mostly jokes. The, these are, it's nothing to be taken seriously. It's just simply to add color to what would otherwise be a boring fantasy league. But sometimes certain things happen in our personal lives that transcend football. It transcends fantasy. It transcends all of us. There comes a time in a man's life when he has to be transparent about the skeletons in his closet. And that time has come for me. As most of you know, I dated Andy's mother for about seven or eight years. Now, during this relationship, I had a lot of internal battles. If I could break down these battles into percentages, I would say that 99.999% of the troubles that I had was accepting Andy as being my son, uh, accepting his lifestyle, accepting the way he looks. It was an issue for me, and still it's an issue to this day. Andy's mother and I, we argued about this all the time. Why can't you accept my child? He's my child, so he's our child. So I didn't want to always hear that shit. So what I did sometimes is I rolled up my sleeves and I battered her around the apartment for several hours. It could, you know, could have been for different reasons. Maybe the food wasn't warm enough. She didn't clean up the apartment. Or I was just bored and I wanted to do it just because I knew I could. There was the incident at the JFK airport. Incidents at numerous family functions. And I may or may not have slapped the shit out of her at a Trader Joe's once. But I'm coming forth today just just to say fuck it. If, if Josh Brown can be open about what he has done to the woman in her in his life then so can i of course andy's mother and i aren't together anymore uh you know it wasn't because she grew strong and she decided to leave me because she found out that she was good enough and that i am a total piece of shit i dumped her i didn't want her anymore so what i've come to to tell you guys today is just fucking with you guys you know i'm still with this bitch this is your week seven recap and there's a few items to discuss here this week what i want to start with is my week seven opponent because this is pretty bad. And when I say bad, we're not talking Michael Jackson bad. We're talking brain cancer bad. Joe is one in six. And that's already bad enough. But, you know, at the same time, J. Ray is one in six as well. But J. Ray's not doing nearly as bad as Joe. And when I say nearly as bad, I mean in terms of a pattern and just over the scope of the last five or six years of fantasy. I'm going to run down Joe's records from 2010 till now. In 2010, Joe finished with a record of eight and five. 2011, he finished with a record of 11 and three. He won the division that year and he made it to the championship, the infamous Brother Bowl, where he lost to Orlando by about a point or so. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember. In 2012, he went four and nine. In 2013, he went five and eight. In 2014, he went one and 12. And 2015, he went five and eight. And of course, this season, he is one and six. So if we do the math as we look at the papers, since 2010, 
excuse me, since 2012 and on, since he's lost to Orlando in the Brother Bowl, Joe has had a record of 16 and 43. I'll say it again. Since 2012, Joe, after losing to Orlando in 2011, after doing the, 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 one of the most terrible managerial moves that anyone could ever make, at the time of the championship game, he decides to sit down his regular quarterback, who I always forget who it was, and he decided to play Tim Tebow and lost. Had he played his regular quarterback, he would have gotten the necessary points to beat Orlando. But since then, Joe has sported a record of 16-43. and 43. Obviously, he's at the bottom of the pile as far as point totals go in the league with a total of 458 points. Joe's the only one of us who's still in the 400s, as Jay Ray is a quick second with 555, and then there is some distance <laughs> after that. Okay, Hensel has 584. So, it gets worse for Joe, because in order to really illustrate to you how bad his team has been, first of all, I just want to add that this week... Joe didn't pick up or or, or didn't make an adjustment on his team because he had Jonathan Stewart on his bye when he was facing me. And he didn't make an adjustment till maybe Sunday. Uh, He didn't make a waiver pickup. I don't think he would have gotten the the rights to Jay Ajayi because Hensel had the number one uh, pick in the... uh, uh, Hensel had the number one waiver pick and Joe had the number two pick. So either way, he wouldn't have been able to get a hold of Jay Ajayi, but I'm pretty sure he could have gotten a way better selection than Mohamed Sanu. But speaking of Mohamed Sanu, who is a part of Joe's wide receiver core, this further illustrates just how bad Joe's been. You see, because in these seven weeks that we have played, Joe has gotten three touchdowns from his wide receivers. Three touchdowns. All three of those touchdowns between Allen Robinson, Julian Edelman, and let's not even count Mohamed Sanu because I don't really think Joe's really played him up until this point. I've looked through all the weeks, and Joe's only touchdown has come from Allen Robinson, who had two touchdowns in week three, and he had one touchdown the following week. Both of these weeks were losing efforts. So when you get three touchdowns from your wide receivers and we're seven weeks in, that really lets you know just how bad it's been. The playoffs are a... The the, the playoffs are so out of reach at this point. For Joe, it's an understatement, both by point total and by what you figure to be the pace of where his season just happens to be going. It, it It's hilarious at the same time. And again, I will say that I don't know whether there is some sort of truth, some form of, of a manifesting a loss or manifesting a losing season to naming your team playoffs question mark question mark with Jim Mora as your logo. There's got to be some form of truth to that. Now, this week, uh, Joe faces Hensel. Now, we'll get back to how special that matchup is just uh, just a little later. I want to get to my opponent for week eight. And that's Ed. Ed, who anticipates uh, these recaps uh, for whatever reason. Probably, he's really anticipating this one because he's expecting me to really talk some shit at him. And and what what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to talk shit. Even though, ever since Ed has come back into the league, yes, he beat me in the championship last year. But I still have an upper hand in the series by two games to one. Just mentioning that. But 
th- th- this idea, um, uh, Ed being seven and zero, which to my recollection, this is the best start a team has had. I I, I do not believe anyone has ever gotten to seven and zero. There's for some reason, Eric pops into my head pre 2010 where he started out maybe six games or something but i don't think he made it to seven but as far as i know this is the best start that that anyone's had and of course you know ed has a decent team no one you know no one's gonna bullshit about that but i i I take a look at ed's team and this is the reason why there is no fear in my mind that uh ed's team is for real in other words, Ed's team is not his record. What Ed's done, and to his credit, is he's managed to make some pickups and draft well because he picked up Christian Michael. Not sure what round he picked him up in, but he picked up Christian Michael and he's pretty much, he served Ed. And right now he also has uh, Jacquees Rogers, if I'm pronouncing his name right. You see, but those two players are the very reason why Ed shouldn't put any fear in anybody's heart. Because he has such temporary situations with these two running backs. What happens when... I don't even know the the name of the guy on my team he's so unlikely to play. Uh, What happens when Thomas Rawls comes back for Christian Michael? I mean, obviously, Christian Michael has proven himself to be the better back, but is there a timeshare? Thomas Rolls was the number one back to start off the season. What happens when Doug Martin comes back? What's going to happen with Rodgers' position? I mean, Doug Martin has proven himself to be valuable for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So what you have here is Ed's ability to manage his team, but to sort of temporarily hold himself up sort of duct taping his team together and it's 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 holding well right now it's holding well in my opinion he's very fortunate that pedro had ezekiel elliott in the of course everyone's always fortunate when somebody's on a buy but due to the fact that he won by such a small margin he just gotta know that fucking ezekiel elliott would have fucking had like 18 fucking points and he would have fucked him in the ass so this can be very you know these numbers can be very inflated and here's the other reason the other reason why i don't believe there's anything there is because i truly and honestly feel that eventually Ed's going to trade himself out of a good team. This is something that Pedro did about two years ago. I believe he had a very good team, and he traded himself out of it, and then he went to shit. Ed keeps throwing around A.J. Green. And see, the reason why I'm saying this, why I'm speaking this out on the recap, is because I want Ed to hold on to A.J. Green. Hold on to A.J. A.J. Green is the last hope that you have of offensive consistency. You have Drew Brees. Drew Brees, like many of us, is a quarterback, like many of us have, is a quarterback who has the ability to score from 25 points to 32 points. Great. That's awesome. We, we, uh, plenty of us have elite uh, quarterbacks. A.J. Green is the second-ranked receiver right now behind a certain guy named Julio. Okay? Now, A.J. Green has three really good performances and four shitty performances. He got, you know, very fortunate that he got that bomb that that, that he caught um, this weekend. So hold on to A.J. Green because in three to four weeks, you don't know what's going to happen with your team. Jarvis Landry, have you heard of Jay Ajayi? Shit, he made made Arian Foster retire. (laughs) What do you think Jarvis Landry is going to do? Ed has no solid running backs. Where are those points going to come from? And with inconsistent wide receiver points, of course, Amari Cooper's a solid wide receiver too. He's got that there. But where are these big points going to come from? This is a team that's going to be very different. And even this, I will argue that Ed right now in his head, he's holding on to some, this way he he continues to ask all these questions. Ed's holding on to some idea where he thinks he's going to have a, uh, an elite uh, fantasy season. 
and I don't see it happening because of the running back situation because I it's going on a decline. He was very fortunate to start off the season with another temporary situation in D'Angelo Williams, and now Le'Veon Bell's here. Just about every team that you can look at in this fantasy league, probably with the exception of Joe because Arian, uh, Adrian Peterson got hurt at the beginning of the season, um, has a consistent running back situation, Okay. I have Frank Gore. He's not the greatest running back in the world, but Frank Gore is going to get a humongous bulk of the carries in Indiana. Indianapolis, whatever the fuck. Uh, you, you've got Paul, who's got Todd Gurley uh, and, and, and some other fucker. The, every team has a solid situation. Ed doesn't have that. So I, I, Ed's team isn't its record. And you will not go undefeated because you will lose this week, sir. Cam is coming back. Everything is coming back full circle. And Bundy's prediction of making the playoffs is its an inevitability. So I'm done with you, Ed. You suck. So we will move on to a very uh, interesting situation that we have here. And that is in this, uh, this Hensel and Joe matchup. If you take a look at Joe and Hensel's team you'll notice that there are a lot of empty slots. Hensel's team, and, I, and I'll read off these names. I'll read off the following. Le'Veon Bell, Jay Ajayi, uh, excuse me, Carlos Hyde, Rashad Jennings, all these players for Hensel are on a bye. Now, Joe has some other players who have who are on buys as well like jesse james and he's got the the 49ers defense on a buy too but here's what's interesting about joe because as i said he had the opportunity to get a better selection in the waiver order but is joe going to make a move right now when the waiver pickups come in is he going to make a move to get a better tight end uh for his team this week to get a better defense for his team this week if i'm not mistaken i believe that pedro is going up against well pedro's defense is going up against dallas okay pedro has the philadelphia defense i don't think pedro is going to put the philadelphia eagles against um against uh, Ezekiel Elliott and the Cowboys offense. And I also want to make another prediction with Pedro. And uh, I, I believe one of you is going to pick Dak, um, is going to pick Dak this week. And I think it might be Pedro. But I'll get to that in a second. Now, Hensel has all these pickups to make. And this is interesting, of course, because I do want to give Hensel a big up and say that he did pick up Jay Ajay. And he was paying enough attention to the point where he could do that. And that is a, you know, those are the kind of pickups that are game changers. You know, they're the kind of pickups that Hensel wouldn't have done two, three years ago, but he did it now. And you have to give him credit for that. You know, as much as, you know, I like to fuck around as much as anybody and give him shit and say that he doesn't care about his fantasy team, but he made that pickup and he fucked Orlando in his ass because of it. So... Uh, this is going to be very difficult, though. I mean, I guess he could throw in Golden uh, uh, Golden Tate. He can throw him in there, but he's going to have to. He's not going to pull in Willie Sneed against the uh, against the Seahawks. So these are multiple pickups that he's going to have to do. This could quite possibly be the lowest scoring game of the season. Period. Tom Brady going up against the Buffalo Bills. That's Rex Ryan going up against Belichick. You know, he always plays them great there. But then it's the interesting situation where you have uh, Hensel's Gronk against Brady, uh, against uh, Joe's Brady. And then, and then Hensel also has a situation where he's got the Packers defense up against Atlanta. Is Hensel going to play uh, the Packers defense up against the best offense in the game? Will he even pay attention? There's a lot of challenges for this game for these two. And I, and I want to monitor this game very closely. This is going to be the most interesting game of the week for me because I want to know what they make out of all of this. Now, Pedro has lost his last two games. He, he, he's lost his last two games to uh, Joe and to Ed. 
Now, the reason why this has happened is because Pedro is getting absolutely zero production out of his quarterbacks. Last week, he started uh, Carlson Wentz. I think his first name is Carlson, right? He started Wentz, and Wentz gave him a 7. And this week, he started Phillip Rivers, who's not really doing much of anything this season. He's uh, put up two 20-point performances, but other than that, it's just really been anemic. So I predict that Pedro is going to pick up uh, uh, Dak Prescott, and he is going to start him uh, this Sunday, which is why I'm really doubting. Uh, let, let me see what... what uh, Pedro is fourth in the waiver pickups, and I'm putting this out now, knowing that this will probably uh, uh, be up when most of you are sleeping, so it won't even matter. So uh, Pedro is fourth in the waiver pickup. So he is, uh, Joe's not going to make a pickup. He's number one on the waiver order. Eric isn't going to make a quarterback selection. And Paul, okay, okay. So either Paul or Pedro is going to end up with Dak Prescott I think either of you guys at this point have made that selection Paul it would make a lot of sense uh that he does because I don't know if he's going to continue to depend on uh Jameis Winston um to to give him points I mean I know he's got that connection with Evans and Winston but I'm not sure if he wants to chance that and Pedro obviously has a situation where he's not getting any fucking production out of Phillip Rivers so it may be uh time for him to make a change now, th- this is exposing something within Pedro's squad. This is exposing something. And what, it, what it's exposing is, is he, he, he's not really getting a lot out of his wide receivers either. I mean, there's no, there's no supporting cast there for Pedro. It's either Ezekiel Elliott gets 20 points or his team doesn't do shit. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see. I do believe that Pedro will switch up his defense and that he'll at least make an attempt at Dak or Paul's going to end up with Dak. Uh, let's see what's going to happen moving forward, shall we? So let's look at next week's games. Well, first, before we do that, let's take a look at uh, the, the the highest scores and the lower scores. And my fucking internet is, is slow as shit right now. The highest scoring team of the week this week was Hensel with 117. And, of course, the lowest was Joe with uh, 53 points. The commission wanted to give me shit and say uh, congratulations for beating a team that scored 53 points. It's a fucking W, motherfucker. Okay? Okay, when everybody else beat Joe, nobody was saying shit. All right? Now, all of a sudden, when I beat him, it's a big deal. This guy's getting me all worked up. Uh, I beat Joe by a final score of 80 to 53. Paul beats uh, Jason 109 to 82. Andy uh, loses to Eric Fifth, 115 to 85. Eric was a short second to Hensel's uh, 117. Just like last week, he was a short second to uh, uh, Jay's low score. Of course, Hensel beats the commish 117 to 99. And Ed defeats Pedro 99 to 92. Looking on to next week, of course, we have uh, the biggest matchup of Ed's year. Because in Ed's mind, this is... This is some 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 rivalry that he thinks that we have. And I'm here to tell Ed that I don't give a damn if he won a championship last year against me. We are still not fantasy equals. There's just too many components that go into luck to this. And it, from Ed's team, all I just see is fortune. Just it, It's just falling on his side. But, you know, I digress. Uh, so I'm going up against Ed. Uh, we have Eric going up against uh, Taint Sweat. Very interesting matchup there. Uh, Eric being four and three, and Taint Sweat being five and two. And uh, just to mention, Paul also has Todd Gurley on a bye. Of course, he hasn't been getting crazy production out of Todd Gurley, but at least over the past three weeks, he's given him a 14, an eight, and an eight. That's not great, but it's. It's something, you know, it's something as opposed to whatever the fuck he's going to pick out of the bushel basket. So I would give that uh, I would give Eric the the advantage there. We've got my uh, my unwanted child, Andy, going up against Orlando. We've got Joe going up against Hensel in that interesting matchup that I can't wait to see what the point total of that's going to be. And we've got Jay going up against Pedro. I believe that Jay will lose and 
probably, if I was good at math, I would say that Jay would be out of playoff contention. Him and Joe, if they both lose this week. Uh, but we'll do the math next week. This was your Week 7 Recap. As always, may your quarterbacks get hurt before they get out of the locker room. May your running backs pull their calf muscles. Uh, may your kickers uh, get kicked out of the league for domestic abuse. And may your wide receivers get arrested for marijuana possession. Go fuck yourselves.